name is Greg Rossmer here from Open Michigan, and today we're going to talk about creating open educational resources. So, what is that exactly? Well, one another way to talk about it is how to create interesting and useful educational materials using openly licensed content, or why your students, colleagues, and others around the world will thank you for creating and using openly licensed educational materials. Um, I keep using this phrase, openly licensed educational materials, aka Open Educational Resources, or OER. Um, so let's go and kind of define what is OER. And I like to define things by defining their boundaries, where they compare to other things and how they're different or similar. Um, so there's another thing that we're all kind of familiar with is open access. Um, open access focuses on the sharing of content, usually scholarly nature, um, without a requirement to use an open license. So basically you can see it and view it but you might not be able to share it with someone. But OER includes any educational content that is under an open license. Um, and then, of course, OER and OA are friends. They get along pretty well. Um, there's also this other thing out there right now called OpenCourseWare. Um, everybody's kind of heard of the MIT OpenCourseWare project. Um, OpenCourseWare focuses on sharing of open content that is specifically designed for a course locally taught course that you put online for everybody else. Um, OER is a little bit broader than that. Anything that is educationally related, basically, is under the umbrella of OER. So OCW is a kind of subset of OER in that respect. Um, there's also this concept of e-learning out there. Um, so e-learning usually exists only in electronic form. They are pretty instructional by nature. And, like You go through a set of steps to get to the end goal and they might not be openly licensed, whereas OER is, can be electronic or physical. They're usually the building blocks to make instructional resources, and they're always openly licensed. Um, so those kind of have an interaction like that, as opposed to being subsets or uh, other related like that. But anyway, so open license. What is, I keep using this word, openly licensed. Um, the OER definition include, it says, Open educational resources are educational materials and resources offered freely and openly for anyone to use and under some license to redistribute, improve, and to remix, improve, and redistribute. Um, the key points here are educational materials and under some license to remix, improve, and redistribute. Um, so why OER? Well, there's a few benefits. Um, benefits for the faculty include recognition of getting your stuff out there, um, publishing and promoting your resources, um, connecting with other collaborators around the world, seeing how they teach their classes, how you teach your classes, um, and plus just extend your reach and visibility. Um, there's also some big benefits for the university. This is the university's mission statement. Um, so serve the people of Michigan and the world throughout preeminence in creating, communicating, preserving, applying knowledge, art, and academic values, and developing leaders and citizens who will challenge the present and enrich the future. Gung ho, right? Well, the key points here are serving the people of, yeah, yeah, the world through creating, communicating, preserving, and applying knowledge, art, and academic values. Um, so, obviously, we can share our expertise on, on an institutional level and curriculum with other institutions, um, recruit better students because now people can see kind of how we teach our courses and the quality of courses that we're teaching, and hopefully increase efficiency across the institution. People aren't recreating the same thing over and over again. And, you know, obviously this make a reputation better globally in general. Um, or another way, the way I like to do things is with pictures. So we're here in academia, full of people like that, who write lots of things like this <laughs> and like that, and even some source code, and produce tons of data. And hopefully they do some teaching too. Um, and all those things can and I argue should be shared with other people, because we all love sharing. Um, why? Well, because us here in academia, with the people here, and the students too, who write the journals, the books, the create the data, and the source code, and the teaching materials, all those things were built upon other people's things. The whole idea of standing on the shoulders of giants, etc. But how do you do that? I mean, that's grandiose, big mission statement kind of thing there. But what are the nuts and, nuts and bolts? Well, nuts and bolts, let's start with the challenges first, I guess. Um, so when you're producing OER, 
you need to think about how to reduce your risk because we're dealing with things like copyright and endorsement and privacy, things that are touchy subjects and can lead to lawsuits. <laughs> so um, the, the main policy areas though are copyright endorsement and privacy and you know copyright is that limited sets, set of rights that the law gives to authors um, of their creative works. Um, endorsement is basically a fancy way of saying you know don't make it look like you're endorsing a product when you're giving a lecture. Um, in the medical school we don't say always use this medicine for this thing because I might have some kind of financial backing from them. Um, and then also privacy, I mean, obviously you don't want to divulge patient information that's not publicly available or student information of that matter. Um, so copyright is the kind of touchy one that is, takes a lot of our time. Um, and it, copyright applies to tons of different things. Artwork, um, even maps, sometimes charts, um, sometimes fancier graphs and really data-driven charts there, uh, obviously cartoons, and even old cartoons, blah, 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 no matter how simplistic looking they are, um, and possibly maybe chemical structures. Um, there's some debate about that, and drawings and diagrams, and this is where it gets really tricky because there's this whole dichotomy between fact and representation, which we won't get into too much, but so all these things are things you need to look out for when you're gonna make open educational resources. I mean, all these different types of images. Um, even screenshots of book covers and, and uh, magazine covers. And obviously the, the good quality photographs you get from Flickr and such. And text, too. I mean, obviously copyright covers text. And there's ways that you can use text in your educational resources. Um, quotes like this. But, I mean, quotes for the most part are fair use, right? But then, what do you get to the point where you're reproducing the whole poem? Where is that fair use line in education there? So these are touchy, touchy things. Um, and there's a few different ways that you can deal with them. One is by keeping them in there. If you feel that you can use them under an open license, like say the poem was CC licensed or something of that sort, um, or it's in the public domain, no longer protected by copyright, you can replace it by something that you have found that is openly licensed, or you can remove it and just say, sorry, I can't show this anymore online because it's protected by copyright, and if I do, I'll get sued. Um, we don't want to get to that point, but sometimes we have to. Um, so generating OER, there's just a few different things you need to think about when doing it. So ask yourself the question, how can I use content that's out there while I'm searching and generating? And so you need to think about where you can find openly licensed content. Now I'll get, I'll define openly licensed in more detail later. Um, so there's open content repositories, things like Flickr, um, Wikipedia even, and your coll colleagues and students. I mean, your students are great resources to knowing where and how to find resources. They, they're pretty good searchers. Um, we don't give them the benefit of that a lot. So, and then also you can obviously just create resources, new resources that you say, from now on, these are openly licensed. You can use these in any open educational resource. And then also you want to make your stuff available. So we're pretty good at that. We post your stuff for you for free, or you can use third party sources too. So ask that question, how can I and others use those resources? So this is my title slide. There's a little bit something different here than most other title slides though. And that's down here where everybody can't see it. I can't physically move it up. But uh, <laughs> right down here I have the Creative Commons icon for the license of this presentation. So Creative Commons, what does Creative Commons do? This is where we're gonna define the open license. Um, that's kind of messed up copyright symbol. But anyway, so copyright's confusing, right? You have all these different things being said about fair use and sharing and everything like that. So what is really going on? Well, here's the landscape of media today. There's people playing music, making music, uh, drawings, movies, writing a book, taking photographs, and a dinosaur. And people in the old days, pre-digital, you would um, make a painting, and you could either hang it on your wall, or give it to a friend, or sell it to someone. Well, thanks to the advent of digital technology, you can do all of those things. You can hang it on your wall and give it to a friend and sell it to someone else. But 
as soon as someone re receives that, they can't do anything new with that. They don't have the rights to it. It's locked down by copyright. And this applies to all different types of media. Everything that's, that's what we were going through before, photographs to videos, to text, to everything. Um, and that's where Creative Commons comes in. They have defined a set of six licenses that tell the user how they can and can't use content. So don't worry about those too much yet. I'll go through them one by one. So attribution basically says you can copy it, remix it, do whatever you want, just give me credit. So, goes anywhere, does anything, but you need to tell people that you use my stuff. Um, Non-commercial means that you can do whatever you want with it, remix it, display it, give it to people, just don't make money off of it. What that means is a little tricky, there's always some debate about what is commercial, you know, like our blog ads on the blog commercial, Kind of depends on the person that, that created it. Um, but basically, just use your best judgment and you'll be right. Um, just play by the rules and, and be fair to everyone. Um, so, thumbs down to selling it, but thumbs up to the original author making money off of it. Um, no derivatives. This means that you can copy it and distribute it, but you can't change it. You can't make a derivative of the work. Um, so, you can't <laughs> take my painting and kill the dinosaur and scribble all over it. And then there's this concept of share alike. So you can copy it, distribute it, remix it, do whatever you want, as long as any derivative is also licensed under the same license. So it's this viral aspect. So here's the original. Someone takes it and remixes it a little bit. It's also under the same license. Someone else takes it and remixes it. It's also under the same license. So all the derivatives of the original are attribution share alike. So those are the six licenses. You take those four modules and you put them together in the different combinations and you get six licenses. And, but one big thing, or sorry, there's, so there's a spectrum here. So there's this public domain concept, not protected by copyright. And then there's this all rights reserved, original copyright. Um, you can't do anything with it without asking permission. And the CC licenses fill that gap. Everything from attribution only, all the way down to the attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives. You can't change it, can't make money off of it, you can just share it. But, in order to go back to this OER definition, there are educational materials under some license to remix and improve. Well, to remix and improve something, you gotta make a derivative of it. So we don't allow these two licenses down here. We only allow the, the main four. So we don't allow that side of the spectrum. We allow this side of the spectrum open, the more liberal side of the spectrum. Um, so you can basically start now by making really a small change in the way that you create your own content. So the old way of doing things is going to Google and find the first image that you get, right? Um, or you go through your personal iPhoto library or you go to your colleagues and use other people's stuff from your institution. Well, those might not be openly licensed. So instead, go places like these. Um, Flickr, for instance, has a way to search for only Creative Commons licensed material that you know you can use in an open educational resource. Or Wikimedia Commons, they're actually a little bit more strict than Flickr. Um, so everything on Wikimedia is openly licensed. Um, Discover Ed and Creative Commons, and, or you can just use your own content, the photos that you took, and license those. Um, and when you're doing that, you want to you know, be a good citizen and attribute your, the works that you're using to the authors. So include the license information, put a link to the original content, link to the license and all that stuff. But that is really just the minor details that you can go to our resources online and figure out how to do it. It's, it's not tough. It takes an extra five minutes for a presentation. Um, so there's an example talking about orchids. Um, three different images we got from Flickr. And down here I have the, the uh, title of the photo the license, who took it from Flickr, and then a link to the license. Pretty simple, right? Not too hard, but now people know that they can use those images in their other resources. This is another way to do it. Um, excuse the, the medical image, <laughs> but this one we use the big icon so people can see straight away what license it is and then all the attribution information to the right of it. So there's different ways of doing it. I actually do mine with all the attributions at the end of the presentation.
so it doesn't uh, clutter the slides. Um, and there's tons of ways to share your resources. Obviously, we'll do it for you. <laughs> you give it to us, we'll go through it, we'll clear it for you, or not necessarily clear it for you, but make sure that everything looks correct, and then we'll host it for you forever. Whatever definition of forever you want to use. Or there's other third party third party sources like SlideShare or Script D or Script um, Flickr that will host content. SlideShare does slides, lecture slides, and Script does documents, and uh, Flickr does photos. So there's ways to get your stuff out there for other people to use them. Um, and that brings us to Open Michigan. Why am I here? Well, we're here to help you, content creators, maybe other content creators, uh, maximize returning digital resources by making them free and open for everyone to use. So we have two things that we do. We have this Deescribe program, which is a student-driven model where a student is in your class and goes through the materials with you. Um, and it's more of a distributed method of making that OER because the students are in that class and know the material um, on a more intimate basis than any some, like some random person. Like me, for instance, going through it, it would take me so much longer to clear the material than a student in the class. Um, and we also have developed this open source software, Orca, uh, which helps basically manage that process. Um, so this is our homepage at Open Michigan. Again, sorry for the, the washed outness factor of it. Um, hope, I mean, unfortunately, our backgrounds are all white. I used to read that pretty well. Um, so this is our list of educational resources schools that are participating in some featured courses. Um, so a little bit of background on Open Michigan. We were started at the med school um, as when the med school decided to commit to making all their preclinical materials open educational resources, um, their first and second year med school program. Um, and then all the other deans pledged their support as well. And then, so we focus a lot on health OER, uh, which is what it sounds like. It's disseminating educational materials to physicians, clinicians, students throughout the world free of charge that helps um, health science education. And in general, Open Michigan, we have obviously the medical school, the dental school, as you know, um, the nursing school, LSNA, board school, school of education, school of information, and the school of public health. Um, we have a couple different courses from them, one being the uh, corporate finance for health administrators course, which we did a lot of work in, and there's a huge lecture list, and each one of these lectures has a video associated with it, which you can kind of see that's an embedded YouTube video on our website, or you can go to YouTube and view it there, and you'll see that these videos get some really good comments from people. Um, this one, for instance, thanks a lot, the series presentations are very informative and explained really well. Instant feedback to professors that are doing this that otherwise wouldn't get third party or, or external feedback on their resources. And usually the information is good. I mean, sometimes people nitpick, but all the stuff on these videos has always been positive. You know, this is a really good presentation, very clear. Um, my teacher didn't explain it as well as you did. Okay. Um, glad we could help. <laughs> and thanks for this video, you know, very well explained and good examples. I mean, there's Tons of great feedback they can get when you participate in OER. Um, so who to talk to? Well, obviously, us, Open Michigan, and then the Copyright Office at the library. Um, they do a lot of copyright question answering there. And then also librarians, um, the resources that are sometimes overlooked. They're also well-versed in all these issues and can be a great aid in finding openly licensed material for you to use in your presentations and resources. So. Here on out, let's do it right from the start and do OER at all, all the time. Any questions? <laughs> kind of blew through that. I mean, you guys are kind of already associated with it a lot. So, or you, you know Lynn, so. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have something to to post, we contact you and mm -hmm. get the ideas. And yep. And, you know, maybe Greg didn't make this point strongly enough. It doesn't have to be a complete course. Right. It can be a set of a collection of images or whatever, any kind of a learning resource. Right. So um, don't and have to think huge. Mm -hmm. There was this project at the med school 
called The Eyes Have It, which is just a collection of uh, pictures of eyeballs that have different, you know, problems with them or whatever, mm -hmm. or showcase different parts of the eyeball. And, you know, it's not necessarily a, uh, a course or a class or anything like that, but it's a great educational resource. So we, with the, with the help of us, we have uh, made that open license and made it available for anyone else to use and reuse. So. What we were um, thinking of, of when we get it to a polished point um, is a literature review, because mm -hmm. our expertise area is uh, the association between uh, gum disease, you know, all disease and, and um, systemic diseases, and we have recently been through literature reviews of a few of the diseases, and is an enormous job. And there are so many uh, other literature reviews published. As a matter of fact, there are more reviews and opinions and letters to the editors and so forth than there are original uh, 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 trials, clinical trials in, <laughs> for instance, the area of uh, oral health and cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we're kind of toying with the idea that instead of so many people spending so many thousands of hours uh, tracking down all these articles, and writing about it, we, we could post our basic um, overview mm -hmm. uh, of, because it's more or less the same you're looking for. You're looking for who done it, how many, what did they do, and what did mm -hmm. you find, and was the difference uh, uh, statistically significant? Uh, and then we thought we could maybe contribute like that. Will that be of interest? Well, we're always open to helping you figure out the best way to publish your research results. Mm -hmm. um, there's we're not necessarily like the best um, venue for things of that sort, so I would say. I mean, um, journals and, and other mm -hmm. or discipline specific areas would be better, but we're good at telling you where some of those places are or who to talk to about that. And librarians, again, are probably a really good resource for that. Mm -hmm. So, if, if, a, um, if a faculty member wants to contribute uh, his or her course, to open educational resources, and then you know you get the material, and you discover there's a lot of copyrighted stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do? What what is the process that you go through? Right. So that's where we have our two main projects: Describe and Orca. Uh, Describe is one way of addressing those concerns. You get a student in that class who will sit down, you know, during the class and get the lecture materials and go through them and try to identify where those things are coming from. Um, so they'll have a little bit more context about, you know, the professor might have said, yeah, I got this image from a journal article somewhere. So they'll know where the, where the provenance is of those images. And then they can work in a way to figure out if those images are openly licensed or not. Uh, if they are, awesome, then we're done. And then if they're not openly licensed, if there's a good, a good replacement for one, it is. So they'll know what kind of image would be a suitable replacement. You know, I, I don't know medical education that well, so me looking for a replacement medical image might be completely wrong, right? But the student knows what the professor was trying to illustrate in that photograph. Um, so that's one way of addressing those concerns. And usually it's, it's better, it's easier to do it from the get-go. It's easier to make your stuff an OER, an open educational resource, when you're making it. Just limit yourself, or limit yourself. Make sure you're using openly licensed stuff from the beginning, and then you won't have these issues. So it just takes a while to retroactively clear it, um, which is one problem we found with our programs. It takes students, you know, an hour or so for each resource to clear them and edit them and make them OER. If the professor would have just added 10 minutes to their presentation in prep time, it would have been OER from the beginning. I simplified a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me say back to you what I think I heard. Uh -huh. uh, that if I have educational material, uh, you are interested in putting it on a web-based distribution system. Yep. Your principal concern is that whatever I submit is permanent and open. Correct. And if I get if I have copyrighted material, I must either replace it, remove it, or get a permission from the copyright holder. Indeed. That's actually very succinct. Yes. That's, <laughs> the, that's the total... I've just 
described it as an entire set of requirements. There are no others. Well, there, I mean, there's also the endorsement issue, which you just don't want to, you want to make sure you don't make a liquid university in Michigan as endorsing a specific product. You can talk about products. It's not, there's never an issue about saying, you know, Coca-Cola does this or Pfizer does this. But, you know, it's making sure that you don't say we as an institution or me as a department endorses this. Um, and then there's the privacy concerns. Those are pretty basic. You know, don't share photos of students or things of that sort. But the main concerns are copyright. Yes. Yeah. And you actually help people design stuff and put it up? And yep. Yep. We do all the hard part of making it look good online, do the hard part of making it look good in class. <laughs> and you plan to be there forever? We have made a commitment to be here for as long as we can. Um, and the resources online, we are working towards making those permanent in the sense of the library permits, which is pretty darn permanent. Um, we're we're, we're going to start talking with Deep Blue, the institutional repository here, um, and other resources like that to make sure materials are always going to be there for university definition of always hundreds and hundreds of years. <laughs> what about the issue of updating this material? Yeah. You know, this research changes all the time mm -hmm. and there's you know, new findings. Uh, who takes care of that and how is this dealt with? So we leave that to, prof to the professors. Um, what we originally thought was if there's a new version of the class, like if this class is the basic class that's being taught every semester, we won't take our time and, and put it up again and again and again when nothing really changes. But when something changes, there's a new version of it, say something new comes out, we'll take our time and, and help the professor put that course up too. Um, so you can kind of see the progression of the courses over the years. I mean, ideally we'd have, you know, Physics 101 or Physics 101 from 1970 to, to today and see how the thing has progressed over the years. It'd be kind of really an interesting experiment to see how the teaching of medical or physical education has changed over the years. So. Yeah, that's interesting. You don't take the old version out, you just would like to save the different version? Exactly, yeah. So you make it clear then to the uh, visitor, so to speak, that there might be an older or newer version? Cause right. Because if somebody has just by luck found one right. thing, that it might be that that is uh, you know, 10 or 20 years old. Exactly. Luckily, but all of our stuff is no more than two years old right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, in the future, that could be an issue. And yeah. that's just a, just a user interface issue. issue. So yeah. it's something that's solvable. Um, and right now, the way we do it is we just, you know, obviously put next to the course the, the year that it was taught in, in, in the semester. So fall 2009 or spring 2008. So people know the context of when it was so, so how how do you disseminate this? How how do you make people potential users af aware of, of the existence of this tremendous resource? It can really is really a treasure trove uh, uh, when it gets filled up. Yeah, it um, suggestions welcome. We we do the the main things. There is this project called OER Commons, which is basically a uh, repository a. a linking service for other OER projects. So you go to OER Commons and kind of searches across the different projects, kind of the Google of OER. Um, and also just trying to get our name out there too. I mean, get the reputation out there and people will know to come to Michigan for high quality open education, open educational resources, um, which means we just need more stuff out there. And I mean, we're doing the best we can with the, the search engine stuff, trying to get our Google Foo or our Google Juice as much as possible. <laughs> it's, a, it's a process to try and get people to link to us. You know. We also encourage faculty to do self-promoting right. too because that's what this is all about and we encourage them to link to the, their open courses to their CV or their websites. Um, we also have an RSS feed from our site yeah. it notifies people every time a new course is published or updated. So, um, But we're open to any other suggestions yeah. for <laughs> getting the word out. Do the faculty retain the right of withdrawal so they can say, okay, I don't no longer want this published, give it back? 
So that's that's a multi-part question, unfortunately. Um, the first part is yes, they can say take down my course, and we'll take it down. It's their course. Um, but someone could have downloaded that course while it was up there, and Creative Commons licenses are not revocable. So once you apply it to something, and someone has a copy of that resource, you can't take it away from them. They have it under that license, and they can do what that license says they can or can't do. So yes and no. <laughs> As much as you can take down anything from the internet, yeah. basically. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. What is your background? I mean, it, it almost sounds like you are IT, you're education, you're law, you're whatever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, I'm a graduate of School of Information. I have a specialization in information policy and library science. Oh, there you go. Um, I've worked at Creative Commons. I work at the library now as a copyright specialist. So my, my two halftime gigs, one with Open Michigan and one with the Copyright Office. So that who to talk to slide was actually talk to me. <laughs> Both of those emails go to me. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm the copyright nerd around here and stuff like that. So you're the one we, we need to talk to. We have recently had several discussions with publishers who want mm -hmm. us to sign our lives away, basically. Yes, yes. And when we take out uh, where you completely give up any kind of copyright, they get mad at us, and then we say, well, do you want to publish our chapter or no? And then they say, blah, 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 you know, we have done this thousands of times, people just sign, and say, well, that's okay, but we're not going to sign. Right. And they <laughs> don't really say. like that, yeah. but it's, it's as if maybe a lot of authors have just signed and then forgotten about it. And, yeah. and I think it's, uh, it's really, I mean, when you put thousands of hours into producing an article, let's say, or a manuscript, uh, uh, then it really is a very serious business to just sign the copyright away, which means you cannot use that uh, that material again. Yeah, it's no longer yours. For all intents and purposes, it's, it's not, not yours. yours. You gave it right. away. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you can get into the discussion. You can use it kind of and tweak it and change it a little bit. How how identical that does it have to be to be the right. same thing and all of that? But that's uh, right. uh, we can spend our time on that. So so so. Maybe we really should um, get better acquainted and <laughs> you can right. be our counsel on, on, on these assignments. That's, that's a big part of my job at the library, is, doing, is helping faculty retain those rights. We have right. this uh, author's addendum that the University General Counsel Office has written that spells out specific things that authors need to retain when they're publishing. So being able to host this paper on their own website, you want to put a copy of that into deep being able to make derivatives of it and publish new papers based off of it in the future, right. things like that. You know, like, you know, basic <laughs> things. Um, which but they're are not huge. basic. They're not well, basic in the regular standard. Right. <laughs> always they're not basic to also right. <laughs> uh, so, so, do you have some verbiage uh, to that effect that we can actually uh, use and mm -hmm. put in the assignments and shove it back to the publisher and say, "This here we go. This is what we would yes. like." Yes. Um, basically, the, all it takes is for you to take that author's addendum, addendum yeah. print it off, sign it, staple it to the contract, and email it back. Yeah. And they'll say yes or no when they get it. I mean, right. some publishers are like our contract or the highway. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them are getting more used to the idea of authors retaining some rights to their work. Um, they're not to the point where authors retain full rights to it. Um, but, I mean, some publishers are, but not all. The big But it, it's it's a moving process and it's working. So I would try it and see what happens. We have some experience with some of them that are responding well. So is that uh, posted somewhere? Yeah, on the copyright library copyright website. I don't right. have that card with me, but it's under the library. Yep. So um, that's the email address for it: copyright at umich or just copyright dot Wait, wait. Is that somewhere on my notes? Right. Although I could probably put a link 
email me here or go to this forum here. So if whatever. I went to LinkedIn or something like right. that, right. Uh, and it would be, if I wanted to keep track of that set of conversations, that would be my job. And the way I would update Open Michigan would be to write some kind of a summary and mm -hmm. say, this is what happened in the last six months. Right. That's and you would post that, and that would become static again. Right. We're, we're looking at ways of making it less static. Um, I don't want to promise anything right now because we're kind of strapped on technical resources, but um, there's research going into LMSs, learning management systems, that kind of make this resource more dynamic. So you have a static resource, but on top of that, you have more dynamic discussion and, and, and other ways of communicating and learning on top of it, around it, that resource, um, and it's being worked on. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe the, the wiki open textbook model is a little yeah. bit in that vein, right. where yeah. multiple collaborators can update a wiki together and cr create something new, like a textbook. Yeah. Um, like there's uh, the chemical engineering school, or one of the professors there has basically, the, I forget what the course name is, but it's the textbook for that course that he has created over two semesters with the students. He said, you know, you student write this chapter or this section of this chapter and over the past two years it built it up and it's a pretty quality resource now. And it's dynamic in that you, it's still updated and, and made current with new, I mean, it's not like a high energy physics where things are changing every day, but it's something where at least it can be improved up, improved on. We linked to it from Open Michigan. Since he already had the resource himself, he just wanted us to kind of vet it for him and, and make it more widely known. Um, we left it where it was because it's already at a stable location. So we just linked to it. We built a little front end to it. We do that a lot as well. Like if, if someone already has a self-contained learning module somewhere, we'll build a little Open Michigan front end to include it with our collection and then take them to that place. Because basically by being on our site, we kind of give it a stamp of approval that yeah. it is who we are and all that stuff. So. Gives you added credit. It is absolutely <laughs> unrestricted. And you said open. Anybody who finds the website can view it. Yep. So there's restrictions on what they can do with it after they view it, depending on what the author or the, the instructor chooses. So those Creative Commons licenses, you can choose, or they can choose any of those four. Um, so we, they can say, don't make money off of my material. Or um, if you do make a derivative of it, it has to be also underneath the Creative Commons license. So those are the main two restrictions that we let authors choose. And all of them require attribution. We always say you must attribute the authors <laughs> if you use this. Uh, as you said earlier, Right, just like, I mean, it's it's the perennial problem. Hopefully social norms in academia are strong enough that people will attribute the authors that they built uh, things on top of. If I go to Open Michigan and Google Wheeler, I get to the course, he's my colleague, I get to the mm -hmm. course that you were talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, but if I go up to Google and put in we Wheeler Finance Michigan, I don't get yeah. <laughs> so we need to improve our Google Juice, unfortunately. Um, and unfortunately, the only way to do that is by having people link to us. Um, we can't really fix it ourselves too much. Um, yeah. You have good ties with Google. Can't you make some kind <laughs> of <laughs> deal? <laughs> with, uh, we can try. With Mr. Page? <laughs> they usually frown upon it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we could take out an ad, I guess, on Google. <laughs> well, it's got to be some pri priori what's it called? What? Priority Prioritization. Yep. Oh. I mean, that, that's where the things like the OER Commons come into handy. Um, it's oercommons.org, and, and they limit their search just to OER stuff. So if, I'm assuming if you did it on that site, it would come to the top, because there's only so many things that are labeled Michigan on that site. Actually, that might be 